within v2 if you have a subspace which is invariant then perpendicular to that subspace in v2 you will have another subspace so you can go on decomposing it yeah by definition v2 all perpendicular to v1 within that v2 is perpendicular to this so it will be perpendicular to that automatically right this is this is only symbol basically it is orthogonality with respect to that hermitian inner product that we have defined let me now define so now what actually what is what is that we learn from this is that the, the proof of this we can um, see it later if a representation is equivalent to unitary representation we can work with only unitary representations it doesn't matter because they are equivalent to some unitary representation so we can uh, work with unitary representations you you take a reducible decompose it then see whether this is still reducible on v1 otherwise you further reduce so you reduce it till it becomes all set of irreducible representations correct a representation can be written as direct sum of irreducible representation uh, a real numbers this is a vector space okay suppose i have another vector space which is z such that z is in r so this is two dimensional vector space this is one dimensional vector space now v is equal to v1 plus v2 means this is equal to x y z such that x y z are in r so that the dimension of v is equal to sum of the dimension of v1 and v2 this is direct sum now direct product you will write it like this suppose if i write v1 cross v2 okay maybe it's not <coughs> v1 cross v2 is actually defined as xz yz such that x y z in r so it is only a two dimensional vector space but supposing if i have another two dimensional vector space here suppose i have u v here then what happens this becomes x u y u x v y v this becomes a four dimensional vector space this is called direct product direct sum is simply append it to the column direct product is multiply this column with this element this column with this element and write them as column elements that is called direct product of the vector spaces the most important result of the representation theory this is called schur's lemma let d on v and d prime on v prime b 2 irreducible representations i will call it i will write it as irreps which means irreducible representations let a map t from v to v prime b such that t of b g is equal to d prime of g into t for all g in g i'm going let me define a map t from v to v prime such that 
this equation is satisfied. When such a thing is there, we say that T intertwines intertwines D and D prime. This is an intertwining operation of two representations. T intertwines D and D prime. Then the statement of Schur lemma is either one D and D prime. are equivalent D and D prime are equivalent and T equal to 0 or second possibility is T is non singular T is non singular D and D prime first one is they are inequivalent they are inequivalent and T is 0 T is non singular, D and D prime are equivalent. This is the statement of Schur's lemma. Let us understand the lemma statement first. If you have an intertwining operation with a map T from V to V prime, then what, what can you say about T? Two possibilities, one is T is equal to 0 and the other is T is not equal to 0, okay. either T is 0 or T is non-zero, but non-zero T can further have two possibilities. What is that? T is non singular, that means determinant of T is also not equal to 0, but you can have non zero T where T is singular. Now, what does this statement tell you in this diagram? You have two irreducible representations. If what happens if D and D prime are inequivalent? T is 0. So, in this case D and D prime are inequivalent. What happens if D and D prime are equivalent? T is non, uh, T is non singular. What about this case? This case will never arise. If T is non-zero and if T is an intertwining, intertwining uh, transformation of two irreducible representations, if it is non-zero, it is so non-zero that it is also non-singular. Non you cannot have a case non-zero but singular. So, this case never arises this case never arises. So, if this is the case, we have T and D prime are inequivalent.
in this case d and d prime are equivalent is the statement clear before i give the proof of this lemma <coughs> let me tell you that uh, i have learnt the proof of this lemma from a set of lectures given by professor n mukunda in uh, <coughs> math science where naina mohammed also attended and uh, before that i have studied some proofs in the books but this proof is very very elegant and uh, <coughs> another interesting thing is we learned from professor mukunda that he learned group theory from uh, the lectures of valentine bargman in uh, us and uh, <coughs> it appears at some time valentine bargman learned some group theory from shur so there is a very finite string of connectivity to shur to prove shur's lemma you know in mathematics there is a concept called erdos number there was a mathematician called paul erdos who is known to collaborate with lot of people so if you have directly collaborated with erdos your erdos number is 1 and if you collaborate with a collaborator of erdos then your erdos number is 2 so <coughs> there are many mathematicians who have finite erdos number so if we can define a sure number bargman learned from sure mukunda learned from bargman i have learned from mukunda so i get 3 and you all get 4 if you if you learn from me <laughs> so let me draw this picture here just to the statement is actually in this picture t equal to 0 d d prime are in equivalent and t non zero t non singular and d d prime are equivalent and t singular does not arise i want to do this proof very very slowly so that <coughs> there is no confusion in the proof because this is one of the beautiful proofs i have ever seen this proceeds in two steps first step t from v to v prime such that t d of g is equal to d prime of g t for all g in g now d is on v d prime is on v prime okay let us keep these things now let me divide this i'm going to define n of t as null space null space of t what do i mean by that by this i mean 
n of t is equal to 